Well, hi, Valley Fourth Church. Uh, Pastor Josh here. Get to do a fun missionary interview today as part of our missions conference. And I just want to bring you guys uh, some some neat content to encourage you. So uh, first, uh, why don't you just tell us a little bit uh, about yourselves, uh, whatever you'd like to, to introduce yourselves, and a little bit about your history with Valley Fourth Church. Okay, we are uh, Doug and Adele. Uh, I grew up in Asia. Parents are missionaries uh, to the military, so I spent quite a few years in the Philippines and also in Japan. Graduated from high school in Korea, and then came back to the U.S. for college and spent a year in Arkansas at a university there and I realized that God was calling me into probably ministry, and so I transferred to Multnomah University, wow. which is what it is called today, mm -hmm. and met Adele the very first day of school, and <laughs> we hit it off, had a lot of classes, were good friends, and um, eventually as fell in love uh, and graduated and got married, and then Valley Forth was Adele's uh, home church, and then it became my home church. I uh, did a mission internship under Pastor Tom, mm -hmm. and uh, it was actually through Pastor Tom who really uh, challenged us mm -hmm. to join the ministry of Crew, which back then was called Campus Crusade for Christ. Okay. And in, in February, we'll be uh, celebrating 30 years of ministry with uh, Crew. Wow, praise and the Lord. Uh, yeah. since 90, 1995, we've been with uh, the Jesus Film. But Valley Forth is our sending church and our home church, and I'll let Adele share about uh, her upbringing here at Valley Forth. Yeah, yeah our stories are a little different, um, which I really try to use to encourage people. Mm -hmm. um, I was not brought up in a Christian family. Um, we probably went to church, I don't even know if we did the whole Christmas Easter. I think we did the Easter, but... Uh, when I went, I, I had a lot of deaths in my surroundings, um, close friends. Mm -hmm. And by the time I went into high school, I, I was at the point of pretty, I was pretty despaired. I was like, I, I don't want to get close to people. Mm -hmm. I, they leave me. And one way or another, I knew my parents were struggling in their marriage. And so I went into high school kind of you know, with my arm out, and but I love to sing and I love mm -hmm. to do sports. And a friend was going to go to a camp that had competitions with sports and singing, and it was Northwest Teen Jamboree. Okay. So I went with Valley Forth, took a bunch of my girlfriends, and um, happened to have a bottle of wine in my suitcase, <laughs> you know, to really make it fun. Yeah. <laughs> obviously not knowing where I was going, and went and the speaker talked about, you know, a friend who could not nor would not ever leave you. Mm -hmm. And I pretty much ran forward. Mm -hmm. And a dear woman was there and helped me pour out my bottle of wine. Rich Stafford was one of my spiritual parents, mm -hmm. Pastor Tom. The Lord, you, the Valley Forth has really been my spiritual family. And I'm forever grateful. I, as Doug and I, once we, they were the ones that really encouraged me Bible school. Then they, as we came back, really accepted us and nurtured us as young couples uh, and saw, you know, a, a love for the Lord, a love for ministry. And I was so appreciative to Pastor Tom to come alongside Doug and really see his giftedness and so when they said Campus Crusade, at first we said, who? Because we had been at a Bible college. Yeah. And so we ended up down at WSU working with college students. I'll let you go from there. So in working with uh, college students, uh, we also had an opportunity to work with a lot of international students. Okay. In fact, when we would get contacts and our staff team would get together, if they couldn't pronounce the name of the student, they would give it to me. And I oh. said, you guys are crazy. These are some of the hottest contacts. And we really saw a lot of fruit there. And mm -hmm. we also were uh, showing these students uh, the Jesus film okay. in many uh, different languages as they, as I would come across a student and they would speak uh, a different language. I would ask them what their heart language was. And I would say, if I can get a, a movie in your language, would you watch it? Mm -hmm. And they'd be like, no, they don't make movies in our language. I mean, maybe in my trade language, 
but not, not in my heart language. And I asked him again, would you watch the movie if I could yeah. find it in your language? Well, I said, of course I would. And so I would call up the Jesus Film office, and lo and behold, they did have that language. And I would order it. I'd pay $29.95 for a VHS cassette. No Campus Crusade discount, basically the same price that they were charging everybody. But it was an investment, and uh, we would bring it, and then we would show, show the film uh, to these students. In fact, we had shown it to many students, and our kids would also watch uh, the, at the same time. And I remember one day our, our oldest daughter, uh, Jennifer, came to us and said, Daddy, does Jesus speak English? Because I haven't heard him speak English. He speaks all these other languages. And we're like, well, yes, he, he speaks English. And we actually do have that copy of the film here. And so it was just a fruitful ministry uh, using the film and our ministry there with, uh, with uh, international students. And in 1995, we felt God was calling us uh, to serve full time with the Jesus Film Project, which was based in Orlando, Florida. Oh. Yeah, Doug, Doug and I are very need-driven as far as he would always say, why do something that somebody else can do if there's something that right now no one else is doing and I can do it? And at the time, there was no one overseeing the ministry of the Jesus Film for Asia, for all of Asia. And so when they heard about his background, they were like, would you consider coming? Mm -hmm. And so... We packed up three kids and a cat and <laughs> drove 3,500 miles. I would have been easier for me to have gone to another country. I just never expected it to be quite so different. And But the ministry itself, he came now. There's how many people over Asia? Oh, many. I don't know how many. Like maybe but... 30. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, a lot. And okay. at the time... Doug oversaw the, the ministry and did a lot of different jobs. Um, and I did, you know, some odd jobs, HR and things like that. Now you we're doing something kind of different. Different. Yeah, tell us about your current ministry and, and roles and get things you get to do. Sure. Well, let me start off oh, and yeah. tell you that uh, we all survived the trip, <laughs> except our cat. Oh, no. Shortly after oh, we no. arrived <laughs> in Florida, our cat was eaten by an alligator. <laughs> And it was on during one of the trips that I was taking, uh, and I was basically doing language production uh, setup work, and I did that for about 10 years. And then uh, I did another 10 years in being part of the distribution uh, field strategy team, basically taking the film and working with uh, partners and Campus Crusade Ministries throughout Asia and uh, helping them to use that to basically plant churches. And the goal of uh, Crew right now is, is, is to have one church for every 1,000 people. So if there's a group of 1,000 people, we want them to be able to be at least within walking distance of one church. And so the Jesus Film is working uh, together with uh, many different mission organizations and also the Campus Crusade Ministries throughout the world to make that a, a reality. Yeah, and we want everyone to know someone who truly follows Jesus. So what we're doing now, so about four years ago, our director uh, challenged all of our staff because there are more languages to record than, than, than we had the capacity to do. And so he challenged everyone, if they would take uh, one year or two years or more and leave their current role and join the international recording team, um, that would be something that would be a valuable investment. And I'd been talking to Adele for quite a while saying, you know, we need to do this one day, you know, be a part of a recording team and going around the world. And we did a few trips to, together as a family. We went to Indonesia. Um, also, I would take some of our kids on a mission trip and we would go and record languages, but was just feeling like someday we want to just uh, do this like our full-time job and, um, and, but we couldn't at the time because of having kids and, and just the responsibility of caring for them and being around. Uh, but once we are empty nesters, that seemed to be an opportune time. Uh, when our director was saying there's a huge need, uh, that was the time to do it. I'm glad you said yes. <laughs> we are too. We are too. Yeah. We are the oldest 
couple of the group. We're the only grandparents that have ever <laughs> done it. And, um, but we've probably done maybe 12 languages or 12 trips. Uh, we should cut that part because I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that's that's all right. Well, let's uh, get to the next question. You know, uh, COVID nineteen affects everyone around the mm. world, uh, so we're curious. You know, how has how has that affected your ministry? Uh, yeah, it certainly has uh, made things a little bit different. Our last uh, trip was in January, um, where we were in Abkhazia recording a children's version, and then shortly after that, we were preparing to go to a Middle Eastern country and uh, do a uh, language there. And as we were on the phone, uh, actually on a Zoom call, talking with uh, our coordinator that was in this country and our translator who was actually in Europe and, and Adele was in the Northwest uh, um, with her father who uh, was not doing so well health-wise. And, and I was back in Orlando and, and then the COVID thing started happening. And, and we were meeting together and, and we're just wondering, what, what are we gonna do? Uh, should we move forward with the trip? Um, and so our, our coordinator was asking us, our Jesus Film coordinator who was coordinating languages, are you guys comfortable uh, traveling to the Middle East to, to do this recording? And we said, well, uh, and we agreed. I think we did, right? <laughs> and we said, well, if our government allows us to travel and if our organization allows us to travel, we're willing to take the risk. Uh, we just trust that God will, will product will protect, protect us and, and provide the way. And our coordinator in the Middle East basically said the same thing and said, yeah, the actors, they don't have a concern and we're ready for you to come. And, and the translator uh, was a little concerned and was saying, well, I don't know, things are happening in Italy and um, we're kind of keeping an eye on that. I'm not so comfortable. And we, we decided at the end of that meeting, well, let's just pray about it and we'll get back together next week and we'll, we'll uh, talk some more and see, if, see how things change in the world and, and see if God may be leading. Well, before that week was even <laughs> arrived, uh, basically the, the entire <laughs> world was shut down yeah. and it didn't matter if we wanted to go or not, uh, it was impossible. So in the meantime, let me back up a little bit and just say a little bit about the, the Jesus yeah. Film Project. So the Jesus Film uh, is a movie uh, based on the life of Jesus taken out of the Gospel of Luke. So if you look at the book of Luke and reading through that, that's basically where our script comes from. Mm -hmm. And uh, the script is, is modified to be a, a mm -hmm. lip sync. So it's a thought for thought translation instead of a word for word. And Bible translators really get frustrated sometimes because they word for word translation is, is how they do things. And, but uh, we know that the scripture is uh, the final authority and it's always going back to the scripture and not, not the film. But the film is, is really a, a stepping stone. Yeah, and so we take, that's our script. And then we have a local, whatever country you're going into, we have a coordinator. Mm -hmm. And he finds, he or she finds, what, 15, 17? About voice, 21. 20, yeah, voice actors. Okay. So they get all of them together. And mm -hmm. once they have all of that, they'll say, okay, we're ready to record. Yeah. And then they contact us. We're given up to a three-week notice at any time <laughs> to say, pack your bags, you're going to wherever. Mm -hmm. And then we show up with our luggage, pretty much everything that we need um, to do a recording. So you basically yeah. haven't been able to travel probably very right. much. So our organization has uh, basically said that uh, international travel is, is banned through, through 2020. So really the earliest that we would probably be able to travel would be uh, January 2021. Um, if countries really start opening up and it makes it possible for us to travel without having to quarantine and, and have to be in certain government uh, regulated hotels, <laughs> uh, yeah, we might be able to get an exception to go as essential uh, ministry uh, workers to go and, and do those. From certain. our organization. But in the meantime, uh, we're still uh, continuing to, to do work. We're actually looking um, in the United States for immigrant populations wow. to possibly see if there are, are uh, immigrants uh, somewhere in the north, 
America, or at least because I don't think we can travel to Canada yet, um, but somewhere in the United States where there's immigrant populations that uh, have been in the United States less than three years because we don't want the, uh, the dialect and the accent mm -hmm. to, to be much different. Uh, to change as longer people live here in the U.S., uh, their accent will change, and mm -hmm. so we want it to be as pure as possible. So we're uh, we're just looking for uh, connections. We're working with partners and and other organizations that work with immigrants, and and starting to follow up those leads and see where these people might be. And we have a list of about two hundred and thirty four languages that we're still uh, looking for contacts that we have no connections at all. Mm -hmm. Um, oh, something to pray about for sure. Yeah. Definitely, yes. yeah. Yeah. Well, do you want to share some uh, encouragement with us? Maybe tell us some of the things you've seen God do through the last year, even in the midst of a, a unique global situation. What? How's God been at work? Well, I know one thing for us um, that is so encouraging that every time we record the film, so when we go into a country, we not only just record their voices. But we also do the editing, and when we do the mixing, and then we also do the mastering right there in the country. And it used to be in the past where a team would go out and they would bring the recordings back to Orlando and all the editing and mixing would take place in Orlando. That's a great thing because we have professional people doing that job and they do a great job with it. But the downside to it, sometimes it takes months for it to get approved because once they have it all fully edited and mixed, it goes to the field, and the field has to check it. And some back then it was going through mail, uh -huh. and you know sometimes the mail is a little slow, and sometimes uh, their priorities change. They're busier now in trying to get people together to check it. Then if there's a problem, they write back to the master studio, and then they have to make that correction. And if there's too many corrections, then they got to send it back again to get it checked, and it just can go back and forth. This way, we can, we can check it right away. Yeah. If there's any mistakes with uh, any pronunciation of words or if there's any doctrinal issues or, or anything, we can correct it right then before the actors leave. We bring them back in and we can re-record their voice. Um, if there's mixing problems where if this, the, the music is too, too loud or it's not loud enough or they can't hear... Mm -hmm you know, certain voices, we can adjust that right then to their liking. And uh, once they are satisfied with it, and we, we lock it, and then we can burn uh, submasters, either MP4 files um, or a DVD. Uh, we basically, any, any, any way, any means oh, that yeah. they are using, uh, we'll provide that format uh, for them. Um, and, and also, sometimes we also even bring in equipment and we've done training on them, and we leave them a, a little uh, a SD card with a film on yeah. it, and the ministry can begin right away as soon as wow. they can get home and, and set it up. Instead of waiting sometimes months, yeah. um, many months sometimes, to get the final product, before we leave the country, they have the final product right there, and they can begin. And just when you take, it, take uh, their heart language and give it to them, it's a lot of hard work to get this project done, not just our part, but with our translator and coordinator and all the actors. Oftentimes they're in a little recording booth for many hours and there's no, no <laughs> air conditioning. It's quite hot in there. But at the end, just to see the joy on their face and, and the excitement that they now have the Word of God in, in, a, in their heart language. And if people can't read, they can actually watch and, and they can see uh, the Word of God right in front of them. Well, I know it's a, a unique season, uh, but we'd like to know maybe what your future ministry plans are as best you can uh, hope, Lord willing. What uh, what do you see happening in the next year? Okay. Um, maybe I'll go a little farther than a year. Sure, and, yeah. uh, I wanted just to say a little bit about um, Mission 865. Okay. And you may or may not have heard of Mission 865. But uh, a couple of years ago, uh, the Jesus Film uh, Project uh, identified 865 uh, languages that have at least 50,000 speakers that do not yet have the Jesus Film. Mm -hmm. And they, they said, this is our target. We want to make sure that these people groups 
over 50,000 speakers can get the Jesus film. And the goal is, is by 2025 uh, to have all those done. Mm. So right now we have, uh, so right now we have 494 of those 865 already completed. Wow. So if you do the math, there's probably 371 left to go. And roughly we have to do about 72 languages a year. So you can see that with the COVID now we are a little bit behind for this year. And so the prayer would be that we would be able to catch up. Mm -hmm. And we're also working with partners uh, that are also able to record uh, some of the smaller languages. So if a languages doesn't meet the threshold of 50,000, we're still, as, we're, as requested, when partners come to us and say, we would like the Jesus film, even in the smaller languages, mm -hmm. we have a way of getting those okay. uh, done working with partners as well. So the goal would be that there would be no one that uh, could not hear the gospel in their, their own heart language. And so our, um, as far as our future, um, we just take one day at a time. And right now we're a part of this team in helping to get uh, eight, Mission 865 fulfilled and making sure that every people group, at least over 50,000, will have the opportunity to have a film in a language that speaks to their heart. Mm -hmm. Wow. And personally, uh, something about being home for a little bit, we had recently moved and just we don't stay home a whole lot. And so moving is a big transition yeah. and having to stay home has allowed us to just get some things in order. Mm -hmm. And it's really been for me personally, it's really been a gift because I feel like it can weigh on you. You're still going to keep going. You know, with people in ministry, it's it's hard to slow us down. But I feel like it's kind of been a gift to say, you're here. You're not going anywhere. Tend to the things that you kind of have needed to get done. And so I feel like once the doors open, there's just great freedom that we'll be able to go really un Un, undistracted you know there just won't be those some of those things that were maybe sometimes weighing on me and a little bit harder to consistently keep leaving behind so we are just preparing for the day and then making the most of the opportunities that we have now perfect well last thing i want to ask you is if our people want to stay connected with you uh, the website or emails uh, how's the best way for them to stay in touch with you yeah uh, jesusfilm.org is a great place to start. Not only can you watch all the films that we've recorded in mm -hmm. any language, we have almost 1,900 languages. Wow. Uh, not quite there yet, but we're very close to that. And uh, you can also, through that uh, website, you can also see where the links are to the Jesus Film app. Just imagine having in your phone, mm -hmm. you know, the possibility of having all 1,800 plus all the other wow. products uh, that we've also uh, done as well, right there in your pocket. Mm -hmm. And then you can actually email a link to a friend that speaks a different language or even English. You have friends that speak English, I know you do. <laughs> yes. So you can email, you know, we the Jesus Film is broken up into clips. There are just so many tools and, and resources right there. And it's basically been called like a mobile missionary right there in your back, back pocket. And if you're going to a place that doesn't have Wi-Fi, you can download it two years ahead of time to your phone or to your device or to your computer or to an SD card, depending on how you're going to show the film when you get there. And uh, the best thing about it, it's all free. <laughs> but us personally, yes. to connect with us would be probably going through Doug's email, doug.katie at ccci.org. Or an easier way to remember it is Doug. D O U G dot C A D Y at jesusfilm.org. Yeah. Okay, we'll put that on the screen for our folks to see. So they can just email you and ask to be on your email list, basically. And, We'd love uh, it. And we would they love to do stay that in touch. and keep them up to date. Yeah. Well, it's been a, a privilege to get to talk with you guys, to get caught up. I know our church will really enjoy uh, hearing the updates, and I uh, just know we can hear to pray for you. And, uh, Thank we, you. We value you guys very much. So thanks for sitting down. Thank you. And we'll see you next time. Okay.